Hey, welcome everybody. It's Sven Hosford again with the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, and today we are talking with Zeb Bartles of Clarion River Organics. How are you doing today, Zeb? I'm great. How are you, Sven? I'm doing super. Uh, it's a great spring day out here. I guess uh, you and all the farmers are pretty busy this time of year. Oh, yeah, they're very busy um, getting out into the fields finally after the cold, wet early spring we had. Yeah. So they're working as much as they can on these dry, sunny days. Well, you, we have a, uh, you have a page in our spring issue of the, the journal that will be coming out uh, very, very soon. And in it, you talk about the CSAs. We're going to talk about CSAs mm -hmm. in just a bit. But first, tell us about Clarion River Organics itself. How many farms and what's a, what kind of an organization are you? Well, we're a cooperative of 15 farms, and we started back in 2009 with six founding farms, and all of the farmers are members of a single Amish community. Hmm. They're all certified organic, and they'd been growing and selling produce sort of on their own, working together, but selling under their own individual farm names, and it was getting to be sort of too big and too complicated for them to handle that way. So they had me and my founding partner, Nathan, set up a cooperative for them. So we bought uh, a warehouse building that we could use non-Amish technology in to keep the produce fresh and run the marketing for them and started renting some trucks and organized them into a cooperative. And then in, in the six years since then, the cooperative has grown from six farms to 15, still all in a, about a six mile radius, still all members of the same single Amish community right now. And so all the farming is done with horsepower, and like wow. I said, it's all certified organic. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I guess I didn't realize that uh, you're uh, all all Amish. Um, a lot of people. The farmers are Amish. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't exactly do this hangout today. Uh, right, if you were Amish. Um, so you were the farms are all located up in the Clarion uh, area. You said. Yeah, that's right. We're okay. about. 75 miles northeast of Pittsburgh, just south of Interstate 80, if people are familiar with that. Sure. And what's Very your, close to Clarion. What are the, uh, what are the big crops uh, that the, uh, these uh, farms grow? Well, we grow 100, they grow, I should say, 150 different varieties and items. Wow. The biggest ones they do are kale, cabbage, and winter squash, especially butternut squash. When I started working with them, everything they were doing was wholesale. And so they were sending big quantities like box trucks full of those items to distributors and grocery stores. And those are still some of the things they do the most of and still sell those things wholesale. But since we started working with them and helping them get connected to consumers on an individual basis, they've really expanded what they do. And so like I said, now it's about 150 different items in you know, various quantities. Yeah. And you guys sell, uh, I know you're at the Pittsburgh Public Market, and do you do many farmer's markets as well? Yeah, we do four outdoor seasonal farmer's markets. Um, we do the Southside Market in Pittsburgh, the Market Square Market, Swickley Saturday Morning Market, and the um, Farmers at the Phipps on Wednesdays in Oakland. Okay, awesome. Well, and, and just a, a final point about uh, organic, and especially with the Amish farmers, uh, mm -hmm. Anybody concerned about GMOs? Uh, there's no worries here with this. When it's certified organic, it's it's non-GMO, right? Right. Yeah. And with right now, with the lack of any kind of GMO labeling standards or requirements, the only way you can know for sure that you're avoiding GMOs is by buying certified organic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about CSAs in general. Um, this is a really interesting concept. It's really caught on. And uh, it, it, especially here in Pittsburgh, and I understand that uh, Pittsburgh is one of, if not the highest uh, CSA rate cities in the country. Do you know anything about that? I haven't heard that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it certainly seems like a really high demand market for us. Um, we're just growing year after year, and other CSA. We work with other CSA farms and help them supplement with some of the things that we grow that they don't have enough of. And all the ones we work with have been growing pretty fast That's over the last five years as well. That's fantastic. I think it was a s slower thing later to catch on in Pittsburgh than in some other places. Mm -hmm. But once it caught on, the growth has just been um, really fast and exciting. Well, I've had I've had the kale that you guys grow, and I love it. So <laughs> it's real easy okay, to understand yeah. why. 
Um, so let's talk about CSA stands for Consumer Supported Agriculture. Am I right on that? Well, c community supported community agriculture supported. is okay. the usual way. Community, right. And, yeah. and tell us how, it, this is one of those great arrangements that's good for the farmer and good for the consumer. So tell, okay. us, tell us how it's good for the farmer. Well, there's a lot of ways that it's, it's good for the farmer and superior to selling wholesale. Um, like I said, that's how we got started was selling wholesale to right. grocery stores and distributors. But it was a little bit scary because we'd plant, the farmers would plant acres and acres of crops on kind of a, just a verbal agreement about what might be needed from our customers and, and using prior year sales, try to guess what they'd buy. And then when it came time to harvest, we'd hope that they were still excited and willing to buy it. And usually that worked out okay, but there were times, I remember one year, one of our big buyers told us that jalapenos were now going to be $5 a case because there was some grower in Virginia who'd planted way too much. Mm. And so the price was so low that it wasn't even worth it to put it in a box and ship it, let alone having grown it. Mm. So what a CSA does is connects us directly to the people who are actually eating the food and it gets them established as a committed buyer. So we know, because they've bought it ahead of time, that three months from now, there's going to be a market. There's going to be somebody who wants that pepper and is going to eat it. And in fact, they've paid for it ahead of time. So the other big benefit is it gives us cash flow in the spring when we, especially we're all just selling stuff that's grown right here. It's not grown in big greenhouses. It's mostly grown just out under the sun. So we don't have very much to move in April, February, March, and April. Exactly. But we have that CSA money coming in now. So the farmers can buy the seeds they need and all the other inputs, you know, to get sure. the crops established. Um, so that's, a, that's a, got that coming in ahead of time. Yeah, that's, that's a really key thing, though, that, that you know, people yeah. buy the food and invest in the farm at the mm -hmm. beginning of the growing season. And uh, so that does help with your cash flow and it guarantees that you have a, uh, a consumer, uh, you have somebody that's going to buy it at, right. the, at the end of the season. So the other nice thing is that it gives us a direct, direct connection to the people who are eating it. So we hear back from them right away. If there's any quality issue, if there's something they want that we're not providing enough of or something they don't like that we're providing too much of. So we're able to work much more closely with our customers that way. Um, we're not just kind of casting it out there and seeing what happens. We have yeah. that direct communication back and forth with them. And then we also have them come up and visit the farms. And it really just uh, sort of an, an emotional connection level makes all of us, the farmers and myself, that much more passionate to do a good job and um, feeling supported by people mm -hmm. who appreciate what we're doing and express that appreciation and who we see face to face. So it's not just an economic thing, but it's yeah. a relationship we're building. And that really kind of carries us through the stressful, hard time in the middle of the season when we're all working hard and, and trying to do a good job. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that is uh, so important. But I think I would think that getting a lot of that direct feedback uh, can also help your bottom line if you're, if you're then able to provide pe what people are looking for. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So then as a consumer... Uh, even though I'm putting up a lot of money on the front end, what I get uh, is actually way more food than I could have bought if I were going to the store and buying it every week. Is that is that basically how it works out? That's our expectation. We still do, like I said, we sell to grocery stores. And just knowing what their markup is and what they're buying it from us at and how we gauge the quantities that we put into the baskets mm -hmm. or the and the bags of the CSA, we estimate that for the same dollar amount, it's um, about 25% more produce for the well, same awesome. amount of money as that's you would awesome. pay if you were buying it from the grocery stores who are buying it from a wholesale. And, and the, the price on it, uh, you have $17 a week is what it works out to be for a small. Uh, yeah. And then a 25 a week for a bigger, for, what do you call it, bundle or a package? A full or, share. For share, okay. Yeah, yeah um, we just call it a share. And I, I can't wait, 150 different things. So that's a lot of different things that you could be eating over the course of a season. Yeah, and that's one thing that we get a lot of positive feedback from our customers who are being introduced to things that they've never 
seen before or maybe just never tried before. Things that if you were at the farmer's market or at the grocery store and you saw it on the shelf, you probably wouldn't pick it up because you don't know what it is or how to cook it. But we put it in the bag and then we, every week we send out a newsletter with cooking tips and share recipes. And we also have a Facebook page for our members to share recipes and ideas with each other. I was just, that was my next question is, uh, well, you get you send me this thing, what do I do with a rutabaga or whatever, whatever you're going to send me yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, so we, and for all of our new first time members also get a seasonal produce cookbook as a free gift for joining for the first time and making that commitment. Oh, that's awesome. That's try awesome. to help them use all those items that they might not know. Yeah. So people say it really expands their, their palate in the kitchen. And uh, we, we talked a lot about uh, produce, but you do have a cheese option. I like that, the cheese option. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you can, it's an extra thing you can sign up for. And now these cheese makers, they're all uh, farmstead artisanal cheese makers. They're not members of our cooperative here in our Amish community, Okay. but they're in the Pittsburgh region. Um, there's I think five different cheese producers, so we, help them by providing that market for them and then they give our members a little extra sort of gourmet item they can add on in addition to the produce if they want so i couldn't even begin to list all the different kinds of cheese that's something that's a little bit <laughs> beyond my area like, start to sound like, like a monty python, python but, skit here you know cheese yeah shop. Exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly but it's it's really good stuff um like i said all farmstead made by the farmers who are milking the cows or sometimes sheep or goats and making it right there on mm. the farm really good gourmet stuff if that's what you're into yeah so the the season the farmers market season starts pretty soon right does it start in may yeah um in fact the swickley market started two weeks ago oh my goodness and most of the other ones are starting yeah right in the beginning of may okay but then the csa actually starts in june do i have that right right yeah okay yeah the first week of june will be our first csa delivery this year okay and then when people uh join the CSA, they, you deliver to a whole bunch of places and a whole bunch of regions, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, so most of our sites are in the Pittsburgh area. That's where we concentrate most of our effort. But because we're up here, uh, northeast of the city and, and way out in the middle of nowhere, we are trying to expand our reach and our offering because there are a lot of people up here as well who are interested in organic stuff. It's just kind of harder to find them and harder for them to find us. Mm. Yeah. So we deliver all the way from Erie to Dubois. Um, we have stops in Clarion, in Franklin, in Emlinton, and in Punxsutawney. So people out this way can also get this good stuff that we're trying to wow. provide to people. A anywhere within the sound of our voice, as they used to say on the radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And people can uh, check out the entire list of where you deliver on your website. Uh, and yes. Is that clarionriverorganics.com? That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, great. I'm glad I had that right. Um, and uh, anything else we should talk about that we haven't talked about? Well, we also have some meat options. Our oh, okay. farmers, because they're all small family-run operations and integrated holistic farms, they all have some kind of animal aspects, not just the horses that they use for farming. Some of them do dairy, but a number of them do meat as well. So we have grass-fed beef and pastured pork and pastured chicken options. Those come frozen. We deliver those just once every two months. Um, so people can look at that as well. Awesome. Those have been getting a lot more popular as you know, as people are finding out about the major differences between grass-fed and pastured meat versus factory farmed meat. Um, sure. People are really committed and passionate once they get a taste of, of what we have. It it it, uh, it truly is amazing the difference grass fed and uh, like mm. as you say factory farm. It, it truly is amazing. Well, Zeb Bartles uh, from Clara and River Organics. It's been great to have you on today. Thanks very much for talking with us. Well, thanks so much for having us. And, and I really uh, appreciate the time. And once again, that's uh, clarionriverorganics.com. And and how else can they get in touch with you? Well, stop in at the, our farm stands. We're at the Pittsburgh Public Market on the Strip. Um, right now, just Fridays and Saturdays. Once the season gets going in June, it'll be Wednesdays through Saturdays. Um, and yeah, that our website's the best way to get our contact information for anything else you're interested in. Super, and we hope everybody uh, signs up and gets some good, fresh, organic uh, produce this summer. <laughs>